Right, so this is the temperature changes required practical, so the required practical for topic 5. Um, now actually it's a neutralization reaction, which I'm aware is topic 4. Um, so what we're going to be doing is reacting hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the temperature changes of the reaction in order to determine how much sodium hydroxide is needed to neutralize hydrochloric acid. So we'd be able to determine um, the end point of the reaction by finding the, the peak temperature change. Okay? So at the moment, we, we don't know whether this reaction is going to be exothermic or endothermic, but by measuring the temperature change when we add the sodium hydroxide to our hydrochloric acid, we will be able uh, to work out how much is needed to neutralize it. So to start with, we're going to have 30 centimeters cubed of our hydrochloric acid into this polystyrene cup. Now, we're using a polystyrene cup not because of budget cuts, um, but because it's a good insulator. If we were to use a beaker, then we would get temperature exchange with the surroundings, wouldn't we? Um, if it's an exothermic reaction, we want to try and keep that heat energy in the reaction so we can measure it with our thermometer. We don't want it dissipating too quickly to the surroundings. And the opposite, if it was an endothermic reaction, again, we wouldn't want uh, too much heat energy from the surroundings uh, increasing the temperature. So by using a polystyrene cup, we are insulating the reaction so we can get a more accurate reading for the temperature change. So that's that. So that's our hydrochloric acid measured out using a measuring cylinder so we know exactly how much is in there and we also know what the concentration is. I'm using one molar hydrochloric acid. And what we're going to do is add sodium hydroxide. We're going to add it bit by bit, measure the temperature change after each addition uh, and then we're going to plot a graph and I'll explain that all in a minute. So the other piece of equipment that's new, um, which is this bit here, which you can't really see, it's off camera, so I've got a spare one here, is a burette. Okay, and you'll notice that a burette has measurements all the way along it. Now, in the actual method for the required practical, you don't have to use a burette. They want you to add sodium hydroxide in five centimetre cubed intervals. So you could use a measuring cylinder, but that means measuring out five centimetres cubed, adding it, measuring out again, adding it, measuring out again, and adding it. Whereas if we use a burette, okay, what you can do is you can fill the burette with your sodium hydroxide all the way to the top, and then when you want to add it, you just open the tap, let five centimeters cubed go through, close the tap. And then when you want to add your next five, you open the tap again, let five centimeters cubed through, and then close the tap. And it just makes it significantly quicker and easier, and actually more accurate um, way of adding variable volumes of something. So I'm not going to use the uh, measuring cylinder, I'm going to use the burette. Okay, so that's what we've got here. Uh, you can't really see it, it goes off camera, but it's on the, in the clamp stand and going up here. So in the polystyrene cup, I've got 30 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid and a thermometer. And again, I've got my burette up here with my sodium hydroxide. Now you'll see that I've already uh, carried out the first trial. So I'm just going to film going through the second trial. So we need our temperature when zero has been added. So that's our start temperature. So we'll just grab that now quickly. That's going to be 24 degrees. Surprise, surprise, it hasn't changed since I did this five minutes ago. And then we're going to add five centimeters cubed. So I'm going to open the tap, let five centimeters cubed be added, and then close the tap. And give it a quick stir and just wait a couple of seconds. It's going to take a little while for the thermometer to catch up. They're not instant and then record the temperature, and that is now 26. So, now we add the next five. And close it, give it a quick stir. Wait a few seconds. And 27. Add another five. Add another five. Twenty nine. Another 
5. Thirty. Ooh, thirty-one, finally. At least one of them has changed. Gives you something to calculate at least. And another five. Uh, that one's still 31 and again last 5 centimeters cubed there we go and it is still 31 so we've now got our results and if I zoom in on those Okay, so what you're going to have to do is calculate the mean of those values. It's not going to be very difficult, certainly not for the first few. Uh, calculate the mean, and then plot a graph showing the mean temperature on the y-axis and the total volume of sodium hydroxide on the x-axis. Now, this is quite a unique graph because it says here, draw two straight lines of best fit. Now, you're very rarely asked to draw two lines of best fit. It's almost always going to be in the context of this kind of question where you're using temperature changes to work out what we call point of neutralization. So what's going to happen is you're going to plot it and you're going to end up with a graph that looks remarkably similar to this. I'll leave the results there. So make a note of these results because you're going to need them. Um, this worksheet, by the way, is attached on Show My Homework. So make sure you download it and print it so you can fill it in. Um, so here we go. This is what it's going to look like. Now there's two ways of plotting this. Now I've plotted it, this is probably the most obvious, but what you notice is most of our plots are up in this bit of the graph and all of this space has been wasted. So there's no problem if uh, you want to do that. So we use a, a broken axis. So it doesn't start at zero, it starts at 24. And you can see the plots take up uh, a much bigger chunk of the graph. This is, this is better. You know, the, the more you can spread your plots out across the graph space, the clearer the trend. Okay, so both of these graphs are showing the exact same thing. I've plotted the exact same data on both. Um, they're both equally correct, but in terms of um, being useful, um, this is better. So what we can now tell from this, so this is where the two lines of best fit come from, because you've clearly got two trends. You've got the increasing temperature of when we're adding our sodium hydroxide, and then you've suddenly, it stopped moving. So this isn't one trend, okay? This is two trends. This is the increasing temperature, and then after the reaction's finished, because clearly what's happened here is the reaction has just stopped, and that's why the temperature has stopped increasing. If we did this for long enough, what we'd actually see is this start to decrease. It would start to cool back down. So what we can do is we've got two clear sets of data here, so two lines of best fit, one for the increasing temperature, one for the temperature staying the same. And we can work out two bits of information from this. You find the point at which both your lines of best fit cross over. Now, in this example, they cross over on one of my plots. They won't always. Sometimes the crossover will be somewhere where you haven't actually taken a measurement. And that's perfectly acceptable. That's why we do this. Okay? So what you can do is you find the point at which both lines of best fit cross over. And if you grab a ruler and you extrapolate down to the x-axis, okay, you can find the volume of sodium hydroxide that was needed to neutralize it. So what we can say is therefore 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide was needed to neutralize the hydrochloric acid. Okay. The other thing we can get from the graph is we can actually work out what the maximum temperature change was. And that is just by doing the same thing and extrapolating across 
to the y-axis. In this case, the maximum temperature reached was 30 degrees. Now again, we kind of already knew that because of the um, from the experiment. Now, now this data I've plotted here is just from the trial one. Yours will be slightly different because you're plotting the average. Okay, but if we were just plotting trial one, this is what it would look like. And you could see that the maximum was 30 degrees. Now, you're not always, I mean, we were lucky here, um, we were able to measure the maximum temperature change, but sometimes you won't. Sometimes the temperature change will be too fast and the thermometer can't keep up, in which case this two lines of best fit method is the only way to actually work out what the maximum temperature change was. But you can work out two bits of information here. So even though it was a neutralization reaction, that's technically topic four, we've used the energy change of the reaction, the temperature change of the reaction, in order to work out what volume of sodium hydroxide was needed to neutralize our acid. And finally, I suppose we can see very clearly that uh, the temperature has increased and therefore it must be an exothermic reaction. So just to reiterate, um, this worksheet here is attached on Show My Homework. You need to print it and fill it in, calculate the mean, and then I would like you to plot your own graph. It would be very similar to this, but obviously slightly different. Two lines of best fit, okay, and then extrapolate your two lines of best fit to work out the volume needed to neutralize and the maximum temperature. Um, if you don't have any graph paper, then I recommend probably the best thing to do is go into Excel and create a blank graph with grid lines and print that. Um, if you can't do that and you can't print that, then actually I'm not going to lose too much sleep over the graph. But this is definitely a skill that you need to get good at. Remember, graphs are usually worth three or four marks. They should be very, very easy marks. Okay? So remember, there's pretty much always two marks available just for putting the plots in the right place and then a third mark for the lines of best fit. For a graph like this, it would probably be worth four marks. What? The first two marks would be for all the plots in the right place. The third mark would be for two lines of best fit. And the fourth mark would be for both lines of best fit being extrapolated so that they intercept, so that they cross over each other. Okay? So, objectively speaking, very easy marks available here. So I would prefer, if you could, practice uh, plotting this type of graph. But again, if you have no means to do so, then don't worry about it. But if you can, that would be great.